Hi there, John Draws here again. Today I'm going to talk to you about how to tune your drums. Now if you ask 20 different drummers how they tune their drums, you probably get some different answers. Um, what I'm going to talk about today uh, is the way I get the way of the drums to sound the way that I like them. It's based on science. I'm going to try and not get too sciencey talking to you. And also a lot of the drummers that I admire tune their drums this way also. So, um, first off, here it is in a very quick nutshell. The bottom head should be thinner, top head should be thicker. Bottom head should be tighter, top head should be looser. Some people hear that and they kind of don't, why should the bottom head be tighter? There's, there's a lot of science into that. It makes the drums sound good. And if the bottom head is thinner, it gets tighter easier. So it's like you're really cranking the drum real hard or gonna, you know, damage the drum at all. It just, it just makes the drum sound the way I want it to. And I want the drum to have a nice round sound. It's gonna have an attack, a start of the sound. It's gonna have a bite of the sound. It's gonna have a decay to the sound. It's gonna have a nice round sound to it. Uh, the way I tune my drums, the sound is still fairly short. And, uh, I use no muffling on my drums at all. I tune them wide open. I'll have another video later on I talk about how to muffle drums properly. Um, my drums still get a fairly short sound because of the way that I tune them. I use thick heads on top and I tune them kind of medium low to low. So they respond pretty quickly. Also, with my classic drum set, these are 60s Ludwig drums. They have what's called a, a rounded over bearing edge or a ball back bearing edge. So it's not as punchy and ringy is a more a modern drum would be, which kind of also produces the sound. And I like the way my drums sound. That's the sound that I want out of them. Now as far as the mechanics of tuning the drum, I'm not going to take a drum head off and have you watch me put the drum head on. There's a lot of videos like that on YouTube already, and either they put it into fast forward speed, or they just cut while they're doing it. Because watching someone turn a bunch of lugs is boring. I'm not going to do that for you. I'm just going to talk about it. When I put a drum head on, you want to make sure the drum head fits in the rim properly, if the rim's not bent out of shape, um, and that sits on the drum nicely. Then I go ahead and I finger tighten all the tension rods. Just to be clear, some people use different words to describe them. This part of the drum is called the lug, this part's called the tension rod. Some people call this the lug, but the proper name is that this is the lug, and that's the tension rod. Just so there's no confusion as I'm talking to you. If I get all the tension rods, just finger tight. And that means as soon as it touches the rim, I stop tightening it. I don't tighten it as far as I can with my finger, because I can force it down a bit more. The problem is, when there's no tension on the head at all, and I crank one of them down, then it goes on crooked which puts the head on crooked and it will never sound right. So I just get it until each of them touch the rim and then I stop. Um, some people seat the head, some people don't. I do because it's the way I was taught to. I have seen a lot of people don't seat the head and it still sounds good. Seeing the head is just kind of pushing the middle of it. You'll hear the, the collar kind of crack a little bit and it's getting its first stretch. It's kind of like pre-stretching the head a little bit. Um, it kind of makes sure the drum head is going on even all the way around. Um, if a lot of people don't do that, I don't know that necessarily makes that big of a difference. It's the way I was taught how to do it, so kind of like tradition, I still do it. Then I go around and I turn the tension rods, maybe like a half turn each. And we do kind of what we call a star or a crisscross pattern. I might tune this lug here, then the one opposite from it. Then I pick another tension rod, tune it, and the one opposite it. This one has six, there's one more pair, tune that one, and the one opposite it. It helps the head to go on more evenly again. If I tune it like here in a circle, the head's gonna go on crooked. If I tune these two first on this end, it's gonna go on crooked. The head won't be on evenly, it's gonna sound bad. Uh, and once the drum has, has enough tension to where it makes a sound, not just a hidden plastic sound, it actually makes a tone. Here's one of the most important steps. I have to get the head in tune with itself. 
So um, it really helps to use something soft, like my finger, or a soft mallet, and hit each lug, and listen to the sound. Those drum is already tuned, they're always the same. But one might be a little higher, one might be a little lower. And that takes practice to listen for. You know, you have to just kind of listen carefully. Was it higher or lower? Do they sound the same or not? If it sounds different, adjust one of them. If you can't tell if it's higher or lower, just adjust it and see if it gets better or worse. Now they sound less the same, go the other direction. If they sound more the same, go that direction a little bit more until they sound the same. Once I get two of them in tune, and one to a third one. Once the whole head is in tune, it's going to sound much better. Um, if each one is tuned differently, you're going to get all kinds of crazy overtones. Without getting too sciencey, uh, the fundamental is the low pitch you hear. Oh. There's also Ow. a higher sound also at the same time ringing. The higher sound is the overtones. Uh, when, when each tension rod has tightened the head to a different note, I could have possibly six different notes at once out of this drum with six competing overtones and kind of that ow, ow, nasty ring sound. If you get the drum head in tune with itself, it helps to eliminate that. Uh, another thing that helps me try and listen and get them all in tune is to muffle the bottom head. I would put it on like a chair with a cushion or on a pillow or a blanket, something soft. So the bottom head's not ringing while I'm trying to listen to the top head. Uh, and vice versa, I'm doing the bottom head, so doing the same thing I put upside down with the top head or on something soft. Another thing that can help if you're hearing too much rain is to put your finger in the middle of the drum. Muffle it just slightly and it stops the vibration from going across the drum and vibrating the opposite end. But just in the middle slightly hear more of the sound just at that lug, where it's being tightened up there. Once you get into it with itself, then it's just a matter of raising and lower the pitch to wherever you want it. In theory, if I have all of them in tune with each other, and I want the, want the drum to be higher, if I tune them all a quarter tune, it should still be in tune with itself when I tune it up. They've all gone the same amount higher, it should still be in tune. I would, I would still check it, but it should be very close to being in tune. You know, then you can set the pitch wherever you want it. By getting the bottom head tighter, the sound waves react in a way, and I don't get too sciencey, but it makes the drum sound fairly short. It's that nice round sound that I like. Doo, doo. Where it's not too short, there's enough of a body of a tone that I can hear it, but it's not going bow with ringing forever. It just gets a nice sound. Now, part of the sound is going to be in the drum heads you choose. Uh, the big three right now are Remo, uh, Evans, and Aquarium. I use Remo drum heads. Just, I was raised on Remo heads. That's what I've always used. Uh, though, I mean, Evans heads sound nice. They feel nice. So do Aquarium heads. Like with the Remo heads, the Diplomat's the thinnest head. The Ambassador's the middleweight. Emperor's the heavyweight. And here, I, and on mine, I have pinstripe. Pinstripe is a two-layer head, so it's very thick. The pinstripe also has tiny little filaments in the edge, and so that's a proprietary material. It looks like cotton fibers. That's what it really is. And that's supposed to also help control overtone ring. And then it has the iconic stripe on it. That's why it's called a pinstripe. Um, I like that sound because it's a nice, thick, mellow, heavy sound. It's the sound I like on the drums. And again, I don't need muffling at all. It gets the sound that I want out of the drum. And also, it's ringy and it's loud. Again, I don't want to talk too much about muffling. If I put a lot of muffling on the drum, it makes it quiet. So I've played on people's kits where the snare drum's nice and loud and they get the tom. There's no, I have to really pound it to get a sound out because they put so much muffling on it that it kills the sound. Muffling should not be part of tuning your drums. And I have had more than one drummer tell me, John, why do you bother tuning your drums? Just get them tight and slap some cotton on there or felt or tape or foam rubber or tissue or whatever they're using to muffle their drums. It'll sound fine. Uh, Muffling is a whole separate issue from tuning and getting your drum sound. 
And that's kind of how you would tune it, Tom. Um, and that general advice works for any drum. For my snare and my bass, I have a thicker head on top, thinner head on the resonant side. Resonant side is tighter. The batter head, the part you hit, is looser. I'm gonna have other videos coming out with specific things about the snare drum. It has some other special things about snare drum. I'm gonna have a video specifically about bass drum as well. But that's my general rule for tuning any drum. Bottom head is thinner, and then tuned tighter, higher. The top head is thicker and tuned just a little bit lower. And it gets that nice round sound that I like. I can tune the drum high or low as I want to, but I make the bottom head be tighter. And that gets that sound that I like. I hope this video has been helpful for you. Uh, if it has been, please consider liking and subscribing. I'll see you next time.